Well, let's talk about the book of Revelation. This is our 13th video that supplements our Sunday morning series, The Lion or The Lamb, The Lion, and The Warrior King. We're going through the book of Revelation. And in these videos, I explain some different things about understanding the book of Revelation. We've talked about eschatology, which means things to come. We've talked about differing views on the millennial reign of Christ. We've talked about different ways to interpret uh, the book of Revelation. We've talked about metaphors and similes. We've talked about the number 666. We've talked about the number seven. Um, and so I hope that you will have learned something from this and that it's been a blessing to you. I hope you also share it with somebody so that they might learn something as well. Well, today is the final video that I'm doing and we're going to talk about the last part of the book of Revelation, which is this. We're going to explain eternity. What is eternity? Well, you say, well, I understand eternity. It means forever. Well, let's explain what happens in that forever. You were designed by God to live somewhere forever. Not in your physical body. We know that because of Adam's sin, that this physical body is going to die. It's not going to live forever in its current state. You're going to die. Um, the good news is that Jesus conquered death, and one day we're going to experience, believers, the resurrection of the body to a resurrected, glorified body that's going to be like Jesus Christ. And so forever, you're not going to be a spirit floating around on a cloud. You're going to have a real body, and you're going to be able to eat, and smell, and talk, and sing, and cry, and love, and laugh, and hug people's neck, and it's just going to be wonderful that it's not going to be cursed, it's not going to be under any limitations, um, and that you're going to be able to do things that are incredible that you can't do now. Um, and I'll just give you an example. Um, after Jesus resurrected, you remember what he would do? He would just suddenly appear in a room where his disciples were. They were afraid, and he would just like appear. He would just manifest. Um, I believe that perhaps in eternity, you might be able to move not at the speed of light, but at the speed of thought. Think about that. Um, so it's going to be wonderful. Um, so let me explain what eternity is going to be like. Two different groups of people are going to experience eternity very differently. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. For those who reject Christ, uh, for those anti-Christ, then what is going to happen is they're going to be put into hell forever. Uh, the lake of fire, to be technical about it, forever. And um, when you think about the Bible describing the lake of fire and hell. Can you imagine how tormenting it would be to be in a place because hell technically the definition is, you know, the absence of God, total separation from God. Think about what it would be like forever to have no light. And I'm not talking about just physical light that your eye can see, but no light, no joy, no happiness. Um, no love. Think about there being nothing but hate. Think about there being no hope. Man, living like that has got to be beyond torment. There's no love. There's no joy. There's no peace um, because there's a total separation from God and people that are in hell get what they chose. I I've heard one preacher say it this way. God doesn't put anyone in hell People put themselves there. And I think maybe that's true. And so for one group, you're going to have eternity separated from God. But for believers, it's going to be quite different. It is going to be joy beyond anything you can imagine. Listen to Revelation 21, verse 1. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. Let me just say this. I don't know exactly what things are going to be like uh, in the new heaven when God makes all things new. I know that the earth in its substance is still going to, it's going to be redeemed. I believe the curse will be lifted 
And when you read Old Testament prophecy talking about the things that are going to happen, the order of nature is going to be changed. It talks about the lion laying down with the lamb. So perhaps there are no more predators. Um, perhaps no uh, animal even is preying on another. Um, there will be eating. The Bible describes it as feasting and the best wine and the best of everything. There's going to be joy beyond measure. Um, th there's just going to be this new heaven and new earth. And I believe that it was designed by God originally that way. And then the curse of sin uh, brought all of the problems we have in our planet and in our universe today. And so um, it says there'll be a new heaven and a new earth and the sea was no more. Sea in the Bible times was uh, a metaphor for evil. And so I don't know if there's literally not going to be any more ocean or if it's just saying that, you know, there's not going to be any more sin. But I do know that things are going to be blessed. Things are going to be better. So he says, and I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the dwelling place of God is with man and he will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. Now, the, the definition of heaven technically is being in the presence of God, being where God is, living with God. And so whatever that's like, the Bible does describe it quite a bit, but whatever it's like, it is going to be with God and God is going to be with us. And that is incredible. And he who was seated on the throne uh, said, behold, I am making all things new. And also he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. In other words, he's saying, I fulfill my purpose. I am the point of history. I started it. I'm going to be here at the end. I'm the Alpha and Omega. I'm over all of time and space and creation. And so uh, God is the one who is with us. Jesus is the one who is with us. And um, he said to the thirsty, I will give him from the spring of the water of life without payment. Aren't you glad that God's grace is free? It's free to us. It costs him everything. The one who conquers will have this heritage. And by the way, Jesus is the one who conquers for us. So we will be those conquerors with him in heaven. Um, and I will be his God and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the fatherless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And what he's saying there is those who have not been redeemed. Those that have not been justified, forgiven, uh, that have come into a right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Because what God says about our sin is this, that when we're forgiven, that the blood cover, the blood of Jesus covers our sins, it removes our sins, it forgives us of our sins. But God chooses, he says, I will remember your sin no more. And so when God sees us, he doesn't see any sin. But for those that are not redeemed, those that are not justified, what he sees is their sin. He's not saying that if a person murders, they can never be saved. If a person is sexually immoral, they can never be saved. I can go through every one of these things and tell you examples of people that have committed these sins and they've become followers of Jesus Christ. So what he's saying is if you're not redeemed, if you're not my child, then you will not have a part in this. And then in chapter 22, verse 1, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river. And the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and no longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will now be on their foreheads, and the night will be no more. They will not need light of lamp 
or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Well, that's what eternity is going to be like, just a little taste of, of what heaven's going to be like. Thank you for joining us in this series, The Lamb, the Lion, and the Warrior King, as we've looked at the book of Revelation, as we've talked in each of these YouTube videos about different aspects of the book of Revelation. hope you've learned something, and I hope it's a blessing to you, and I hope that you've learned to put Jesus at the center, because that is the promise that those that do that, those that understand that Jesus wins, those people are going to be blessed. Well, God's blessings on you. Hope you have a great day. I love you, and I hope to see you this Sunday.